Welcome back to Grub Gates. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about Nine Ball. Nine Ball is probably my favorite pool game to play, uh, especially if you're playing on a smaller table. Bigger tables, eight ball can become more fun, but when you're playing on a small bar table, Nine Ball is hands down my favorite. As you can see here, we have a shot after a break, and we're just going to talk about some typical shots that come up in nine ball, and hopefully show you some tricks that can help you along the way. So, let's take a look. So, let's talk about knowing your table. Now, the fact is that every table you're going to play on is going to be a little bit different. There are some rules that you could typically follow, and that's based off of knowing how to use your diamonds, knowing how to measure that out, the power of your stroke, and the approximate of where the ball should go. That doesn't mean that it's always going to be accurate, or that it's always going to be the same. Point in case is this table right here. We just tightened these rails on this table. These rails were very loose for a while. So, the sweet spot to go three rails in a pocket used to be right here on the outside of the center pocket. So you used to come here, and you used to stroke, and it used to put the ball right there. But that doesn't happen now. So let's see what happens. Let's bring it all the way out to the other diamond. So now we're on the diamond. And we're going to double stroke. Nope. That's too much. So, now that the rails are properly tight, they're not loose anymore, let's cut the difference. Alright, this is where we used to be right there. Now we have the chalk lined up on our new spot. That was a little off. Let's try that again. There it is. So I now know that my angles changed on this particular rails uh, by tight, but now that they're tightened up, I'm now looking at half the distance from what my shot used to be. Let's put a two ball here in this pocket. Move these over. And now to make sure that things are proper, We'll go ahead and we'll try that on the other side. Now, like I said, the sweet spot used to be right here, but now them tightened. Let's try it on the halfway point, Let's see if it matches up. I fell a little shy. Let's try it again. So there it is. It's, again, I have to work on aiming that a little bit, but that's pretty much right in the same spot. So I know both these rails are running the same. Now, now, you've taken the time to learn your table, you've taken the time to practice the angles with the cue ball. Well, here's the cool part. Everything that you know how to kick with a cue ball, you can pretty much do by transferring to an object ball. And in nine ball, the nut, that's all the only ball that matters is right there, is that nine tangy. Now we can pocket the one ball, but then we gotta get ourselves in position for the two, and then we gotta try to get the three. And all of this time, the longer and the more hits we have to make, the more opportunity we're leaving for our opponent to get a chance at the table. So let's try to limit how, many, how much time we're at the table. We can come down here. Instead of cutting that one ball into the pocket, we can cut it back off the rail into that nine and end the game. Anything that we did with our cue ball, we can, tra we can attempt to transfer with our object ball. Alright, let me set this up and we'll try to look at that three rail shot again. 
So, if we can do it with our cue ball, we can do it with our object ball. Let's chalk up a little here. Alright. And let's bring the two ball around to the nine. Forgot the six was down there. <laughs> Let's try to repeat that shot now that the six is out of the way. We'll be right out of here. Okay. So. And there it is. So as you can see, anything we do with our cue ball we can in turn do with the object ball the cue ball hits. If you know your angles, you can do that. All right. Now the next thing we're going to talk about is how English affects your angles. All right, so now there's an issue of English and banking. Example, we're going to aim, we're now lined up straight, Diamond to diamond across. This is what happens when I hit dead center straight on the ball. See, the ball comes pretty much straight back. Now, if I, let's say I needed to put this seven away. Well, if I come over and I set myself up for right English on the ball, so I'm just right of center. Then I come back to the right from where I start. And that is the basics of how English affects the ball. Whatever you hit is where you're going to come back to if you're playing it off the rail. So, the same thing can be extended no matter how far the distance, it just takes a little bit of practice to get used to. So in this case, if I wanted to come back to the six, we come over here, we add a little English to the ball, and here we are. Our six ball goes in. So as you can see, in all of those shots, we aimed straight down the table, but by providing English to the ball, we managed to bring it back in the direction of our English. Okay? So, that essentially means, let me grab the ball here, that if I want it to come back this direction, I hit this direction. Okay? Which is counterintuitive to what you would think. But, it's pretty simple once you get used to it. Alright? Let's set up and take a look at a few more things. Okay. So. We've seen how English applies to the rail, now let's see how English applies to the ball. We come down, once again, straight shot, straight shot. Alright, now if we come back here and we apply some English to the ball, you see the cue ball now goes right out of its way, continuing its forward momentum to the side. Bring it back. Let's go the opposite direction this time. You see, we're going down, off in the opposite direction. So now you see how that affects the ball. You see how it affects the object ball, and it affects the cue ball. Let's take a look at it from a little bit of a longer distance. See if we can capture more movement of it. So. English. That time we didn't provide anywhere near enough English. Let's try that again. There we go. We got the ball out of the way. You see, we hit to our right, which, when the ball hit, caused our cue ball to go to the left, and it caused our object ball to then go to the right. Should, same should happen if we go the other direction. So this time we'll go left. 
I was a little far left. Nothing like miscarrying on camera. Alright. So we go left. Nothing like miscuing twice on camera. I'm not going to edit that out. We're going to leave that in. Uh, da -da -da -da. So, that time you see, the ball went, the cue ball went to the right, object ball went to the left. That was as intended. So, that is how English affects on the ball. So now let's put everything we just discussed into practice. Be it knowing the angles that our cue ball travels across the table, all the way down to knowing what we do with our cue ball, what you can also do with an object ball. down to what we discussed with English in regards to what side equals what. As you saw in that case, we didn't quite get the shot right. We hit our ball, but we didn't sink our ball. Let's try that one more time. There we are. So as you can see, that's everything we just discussed to put into practice. So, until next time, stay hungry and make gains.